Hello. So uh, in this section, we're going to talk about the visibility tests as a, an application of congruences. Before this, we've been talking about congruences and their properties. And in here, I'm, what I wanted to show you right away why the congruences are so useful. And in here, what we're going to prove is uh, prove certain divisibility tests that are sort of well known, but many people don't know why they are actually true. So, for example, uh, just to give you some idea of what we're going to do, uh, is this number uh, divisible by two, by three, by five, by seven, by eleven? Well, uh, it can be difficult sometimes to check the divisibility by a given number. I mean, you can just do long division, but for certain primes, there is um, for certain numbers there is some easy ways to check the visibility. For example, is it divisible by two? Uh, by two, we actually just need to check, we're gonna have to check uh, the last digit and it actually, because that number is not zero or it's not a multiple of two, then we know that it is not divisible by, uh, by two. Okay, we'll explain how these tests come about. It is divisible by five. Well, by five, actually, you also check the last digit. And that digit, uh, that digit is not divisible by five, it's not zero or five. So, uh, no, it is not divisible by five. How about divisible by three? Divisibility by three has this interesting test, which you just have to add. If you have a number in base 10, then you have to add the digits of that number. And if that number is divisible by three, then the number is divisible by three. So I actually add the digits and see if that is divisible by three. Uh, this is 15, which is divisible by three. So yes, it is uh, uh, divisible by three. Uh, how about, it turns out that the same test works uh, for nine you have to add the digits, five plus four plus three plus two plus one, and if this number is divisible by nine, then the number is divisible by nine. But this number is 15, which is not divisible by nine, so no, it is not divisible by nine. Uh, by 11, by 11, it has a very interesting test, which is uh, what you do is you start adding the alternating sum of the digits. So it's one minus two plus three minus four plus five. And if this number is a multiple of 11, then the number is a multiple of 11. So how much is this? This is one uh, plus one, two um, minus four is minus two plus five is three, I think. Uh, let's get that right. Uh, five minus four, this is, um, Five minus four, this is one, this is one, and this is one, uh, which is three. Uh, but this is not divisible by 11, so no, this number is not divisible by 11. And this is the kind of divisibility tests that I want to prove using congruences. Before I go into that, we need to uh, remember what it means for a number to be in base 10. These uh, divisibility tests are based on uh, a base 10 expansion. And if you have other types of expansions, then you get other divisibility tests. So the important part for those last three tests was that this is one plus two times 10 plus three times 10 squared plus four times uh, 10 cubed plus five times 10 to the four. And that's the base 10 expansion of N. So uh, let's talk about uh, expansions first. Uh, I'm not going to prove this. You can find the proof actually in the book. Uh, this is proposition uh, 4.6.1 in the book, uh, but it says the following. Let B, which is going to be the base, uh, be fixed. Then every number N uh, can be written, can be uh, expressed, uniquely in the form uh, n is a zero plus a one times uh, b plus a two times b squared plus the dot up to a t times b to the t. 
which is a base B expansion for some uh, T uh, bigger or equal to zero and some uh, digits, which are up to B minus one between zero and B minus one for I zero up to T. Um, you can prove this by induction. And again, I'm not going to do it, um, but that is what we call the definition here is that uh, that is the, this unique expansion is uh, the base B expansion of N. So this here is called the base B expansion of n okay and those digits are unique and sometimes what we uh we write just the digits so we write that n is a t a t minus one to the dot a two a one a zero in base b for that expansion and typically what happens is that in base 10, we drop that and drop uh, drop this if uh, B is 10. That typically we don't write that uh, for base 10. Okay, so let me give you some examples. So um, five, so if N is like before five, four, three, two, one, then this is the base 10 expansion of, um, of n because that is one plus two times 10 plus uh, three times uh, 10 squared plus four times 10 cubed plus uh, five times 10 to the four. So it's the base 10 expansion, but I can actually write this in different ways. It turns out that in base, um, uh, or let me write, what happens if this was a seven, uh, five, four, three, two, one? What if this was a seven, a base seven expansion? What this would mean is one, oh, oops. Um, it would mean one plus two times seven plus three times seven uh, cubed. Oops, no cubed, squared. Uh, plus four times seven cubed plus five times seven to the four. So that would be a base seven expansion. And this turns out to be in base 10, this is the number one, three, five, three, nine in base 10. Okay. Uh, what about one, zero, one, zero, one in base two? Uh, numbers in base two are actually very common, for example, in computer science and, and inside computers. So one plus zero times two plus one times two is squared plus zero times two cubed plus one times two to the four. That is the number in base 10. This is just 21 in base 10. If you add all those numbers, uh, this is one plus four plus 16, uh, that is 21. All right, so um, what are uh, some divisibility tests uh, for base 10? Uh, but again, we could write all the divisibility tests in other bases. So here's the proposition that we want to prove. Suppose that I have a base 10 representation that N is uh, A0 plus A1 times 10 plus A2 times 10 squared plus AT 10 to the T is a base 10 representation uh, with the AIs are all between zero and nine. Okay, is that this is is the uh, base 10 uh, representation of uh, N. Then the following holds A, N, is congruent to A0 modulo 2 and modulo 5. So this says that N is just congruent to the units digit 
okay, of my representation. Uh, therefore, thus, um, n is divisible by two, respectively, um, respectively by five, if and only if uh, a zero is divisible by uh, two, respectively, by five. Uh, what about the divisibility by three and by nine? Um, it turns out that n is congruent to a zero plus a one plus the dot, dot a t. So it's congruent to the sum of its digits modulo three or respectively modulo nine. Uh, therefore, in particular, uh, n is divisible by three, respectively uh, by nine, if and only if uh, the sum of the digits, the sum of the base 10 uh, digits is divisible by three, respectively by nine. Okay. Um, part C, it turns out that N is congruent to A0 minus A1 plus A2 minus the dot plus uh, minus one to the T AT modulo 11. Thus, uh, N is divisible by 11. If and only if uh, the alternating sum, the alternating sum of the digits is divisible by 11, which is uh, what we know are the divisibility by 11 test. And there are others you can see in the book. Uh, for example, there's a test for uh, 7, 11, and 13, which is based on actually the uh, the representation in base 1000. So let me check, let me prove um, these tests. Okay, so let's uh, let's prove part A. Uh, notice that N was a zero plus uh, A1 times 10 plus A2 times 10 squared plus A T times 10 to the T, but uh, 10, I'm going to use here the fact that 10 is congruent to 0, modulo 2, and modulo 5. So this is also congruent to just a 0 plus a1 times 0 plus a2 times 0 plus a t times 0 uh, modulo uh, 2 or 5. So this is just congruent to a zero modulo uh, two or five. And uh, remember this very important fact that I've already mentioned once that a is congruent or n is congruent to zero modulo m if and only if m divides n. So uh, here, to know whether n is divisible by two or five, you just need to know whether a zero is divisible by two or five. So n is zero modulo two, let's say, if and only if a zero is congruent to zero modulo two, and the same goes for five. What about um, part B for uh, the test for three or nine? What I'm going to do is, the same, except that now what I'm going to use for this fact is that 10 is congruent to 1 modulo 3 or 9. And therefore, I can substitute using the properties of congruences, I can substitute 10s by 1s. So this is a0 plus a1 times 1 plus a2 times 1 squared plus a t times 1 to the t. That is just a zero plus a one plus a two plus a t modulo three or nine, and therefore um, three divides n if and only if n is zero modulo three, if and only if um, the sum of the digits 
a0 plus a1 plus at is congruent to zero modulo three. And the same goes for nine, okay? And uh, last, uh, let's see what happens with uh, modulo 11. Uh, so for modulo 11, what I'm going to use now, the fact that we're going to use is that 10 is congruent to minus one modulo 11. So uh, the expansion, the decimal expansion now becomes a zero plus a one times 10, which is minus one, plus a two times minus one squared plus a t times uh, minus one to the t. And uh, this becomes, well, just uh, a zero minus a one plus a two uh, minus the dot, 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 dot and uh, plus uh, minus one to the t, a t module 11. And therefore, n uh, 11 will divide, 11 would divide n if and only if n is zero modulo 11. And that will be true if and only if they're alternating some of the digits. Um, plus minus one to the TAT is zero modulo 11. Okay. Um, so those properties of those divisibility tests are just properties of uh, that follow from congruences. Um, so, uh, for example, let me just uh, do one example of a, a number. Um, for example, the number uh, 13574, I can test it for um, in base 10. This is a, a number in base 10. I can test it for divisibility by two. And uh, let's see. Um, so first, uh, two divides n, uh, yes, because uh, four is zero modulo two, the unit's digit is uh, zero. Uh, does three divide n? Uh, well, what I have to check, um, uh, I have to check if um, uh, one plus three plus five plus seven plus four is zero modulo three. And by the way, I can use all my properties of congruences here. And this is just one plus zero plus five is two, uh, seven is one and four is one. So this is uh, one plus two is three plus two is two mod three. So no, it is not divisible by three. Okay. Um, and now let's check uh, by 11. Is, is this a uh, multiple of 11? Well, what I have to do is starting the alternating digits, starting with the units digit. So four minus seven uh, plus five minus three plus one. This is, um, let's see, uh, four minus seven is minus three uh, plus five, that's eight. Uh, minus three, that's uh, five, and plus one, that's six. Um, did I do something wrong? Uh, four minus seven is minus three. Whoops, minus three. Yeah, I did something wrong. Um, and four minus seven is minus three, plus five, that's two. Uh, then uh, minus three, uh, that's minus one plus one is zero. So yes, this is zero modulo 11. And therefore, yeah, it is divisible by 11. So this number is divisible by two and is divisible by 11, but it's not divisible by three. Okay. Um, let me just, one more thing that I'll say is that there is an, a method uh, that is called uh, casting out nines. Uh, which is used, uh, this method was used to check multiplications. Uh, so for example, uh, suppose that we've arrived, suppose we compute and we arrive at this multiplication, we've done multiplication and we think that uh, this number times this number is equal to 605150. So what the method of multiplication of casting out nines is actually doing, 
uh, is checking if this congruence is true modulo nine. So what we are going to do is actually uh, reduce both sides. If this is true, if this is true in the integers is true modulo nine. So uh, check our work. Modulo nine um, to see if at least that agrees. If it doesn't agree, then we've made a mistake and something went wrong. So if this is true, um, then three three two five times one a two should be congruent to well three three two five is actually congruent to three plus three plus two plus five, and one eighty two is congruent to one plus eight plus two. And I can reduce that. This is um, 13 times 11 if I add. Uh, but then I can, uh, this is all modulo 9. Uh, and 13 times 11, instead of multiplying those numbers, I can reduce again modulo 9. That will be uh, 4 times 2. And 4 times 2 that I can do in my head, that's 8 modulo 9. Okay. Uh, so now check 605150 and see if this is 8 modulo 9. So this will be, this is congruent modulo 9 to 6 plus 5 plus 1 plus 5. And that is 10, uh, this is 17 modulo 9, uh, which is 8 modulo 9. Uh, so these two agree. Um, so at least that check uh, works, and it turns out that this is correct, that this computation is correct. Um, but you can double check other computations that maybe you've actually uh, made a mistake and find your mistake using this method of casting out nines. So again, this is just a method to double check your work, uh, but you know it's likely that if you've made a mistake, uh, the answer is not going to agree modulo 9, and then you would find your, um, your mistake in that way. Okay, so I'll stop here, and next uh, we're going to continue our investigation of congruences, and we're going to talk about uh, linear congruences.